This is Bethel Pasadena Ministries from Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Pasadena, California, where John T. McCall is pastor. We pray that this program blesses you and your family greatly. To learn more about Bethel or to sow a seed in support of this broadcast, visit us at BethelPasadena.org. Just click on the Giving tab and follow the instructions. Now, stay tuned for an anointed word from Bethel Pasadena Ministries. Turn with me on this Sunday morning in your Bibles or on your devices to Matthew chapter 27, verse 11. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say. Jesus replied, for a little while this Sunday morning, I want to talk about, excuse me, but I need Jesus. Look at somebody in your household this morning and tell them, I need Jesus. As we count down to Resurrection Weekend, it would appear that the nation has turned the corner and making positive steps toward coming out of this pitiful pandemic. In this season of hopefulness, many are still grieving. Some are still working through their own psychological and emotional pain. Others looking to improve their financial position. And this Easter uh, marks the change in presidential leadership. The presidential mantle and responsibility of governing our nation has been passed on to a dignified, predictable, Christian, church-attending man. Uh, confidence uh, in our government is being restored. COVID hospitalizations and deaths have declined. Three vaccines are now available. But in all of this, um, look at a family member this Sunday morning and tell them, in spite of the progress being made, excuse me, but I need Jesus. Uh, in the midst of all that is good, uh, all that's occurring positive in the nation, uh, we have a constant nemesis, the devil, uh, always seeking whom he may devour. Uh, and, and, and in the midst of Women's History Month, uh, just a few days ago, uh, eight people killed um, in a legally operated massage business in Atlanta. Six of those killed were Asian women. And in this uh, month when we celebrate women's history, uh, we celebrate the strength, the resilience, and breakthrough for women. But then look at a family member again and tell them, excuse me, but I still need Jesus. Yes, Jesus, Mary's baby. Uh, he came into the world to bring us abundant life. Uh, he left this world giving us eternal life. Uh, and in this critical countdown uh, to Easter 2021, uh, my assignment is simply to preach to you, Jesus crucified and getting up on Sunday morning so you and I can get up. Uh, whatever has caused you to fall, whatever has pushed you down, whatever has had you back down, God is able to get you up this Sunday morning and you ought to celebrate the fact right now that Jesus came into the world, he lived, and he died, and he got up. So you and I can get up. In our text today, Jesus is brought before Pilate. You remember Pilate, don't you? He is the Roman governor and judge. Uh, Jesus has been betrayed, delivered to Pilate, uh, and Pilate sent him to Herod, and Herod has now sent him back to Pilate. In our scene, in our text today, uh, it's early Friday morning. Uh, this illegal proceeding is taking place. Pilate is there. The chief priests and the elders are there. And now look at this text. What, what leaps out to me in this text this Sunday morning are four critical points. Number one. The declaration of Pilate. Number two, 
the dream for Pilate. Number three, the debate with Pilate. And number four, the decision of Pilate. All of these points in this text today, I believe, uh, are really real for us today uh, in the decision making that we have to do in terms of what will you do with Jesus. Yeah, if somebody this Sunday morning has to make a decision, uh, what will you do about Jesus? Uh, point number one in my text today is the declaration of Pilate. You find it in Luke uh, 23, verses 13, 14, and 15. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. Look what he says. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. <laughs> he says, I found no basis for your charges. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. What I like about this uh, passage of scripture is that, 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 that Jesus did not speak a word in his defense. And yet Pilate finds no fault in him. Uh, and isn't it amazing? Uh, uh, here is Jesus. Uh, he is the word. And the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, this Jesus. Uh, he spoke. Uh, and the sick were healed. Uh, he spoke and blinded eyes were opened. He spoke and raised the dead. He spoke and fed 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves. And yet, before Pilate and Herod, he does not speak a word in his own defense. And for some, perhaps on this Sunday morning, uh, it's been hard. Uh, uh, you've been in a crisis of faith. Uh, and, and, and you've been waiting on Jesus to speak a word into your life. Uh, and the question is, the question is, what do you do uh, when Jesus doesn't speak? How do you handle it? Uh, 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 you may have lost your job. Uh, your business may have ended. Uh, employment benefits are, are coming uh, to an end. Uh, uh, and yet, uh, it's in these moments um, where, where it's easy for expectations to go negative. But on this Sunday morning, uh, I believe, and I want to tell you, you ought to stay encouraged uh, because the story doesn't end here. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, are you resurrection ready? Uh, see, 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 the story doesn't end on Friday uh, before Pilate. Uh, are you ready for when he does speak? Uh, are you preparing for new beginnings in your life? Uh, see, for every Friday disappointment, uh, there is a Sunday morning victory. Uh, for whatever you've been going through in your life, uh, you simply got to believe this Sunday morning that Sunday morning is coming. He does not speak a word. And, and Pilate declares to the religious leaders and the people that they found nothing wrong with Jesus. Uh, and, and because nothing was found wrong with him, uh, he was supposed to be released. Uh, in Luke 23, uh, 16, uh, instead of releasing Jesus, uh, look at what Pilate says. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. Uh, isn't it amazing, isn't it amazing that, that here is our Jesus, uh, innocent of the charges, uh, and yet, uh, Pilate uh, decides that he wants to punish him. As governor and judge, his job was to protect the innocent. Doesn't this sound like our criminal justice system today? Uh, I recommend if you haven't read this great book uh, by Michelle Alexander, a uh, lawyer, advocate, and legal scholar, a uh, book titled The New Jim Crow. Uh, mass Incarceration in the Age of Color Blindness. Uh, in her book, uh, she argues that mass incarceration in America 
uh, functions as a system of racial control uh, in a similar way uh, to how Jim Crow once operated. Uh, and, and, and she believes uh, that oppressed minorities uh, are subject to legalized discrimination in employment, housing, public benefits, uh, and jury service, just as their parents and grandparents and great parents were, uh, yeah, doing uh, those years uh, in, in the 60s. And, and, and even today, uh, all these states are <laughs> passing laws uh, to restrict voting rights. Uh, uh, this, these inequities uh, that exist are not new. Uh, Jesus was supposed to be free, and yet Pilate wants to punish him. And we look at African Americans today uh, who are admitted to prison on drug charges uh, uh, at a rate of 25 um, uh, to 50 percent times greater than that of others. Uh, look at somebody on the Sunday morning and tell them, "I need Jesus." Uh, then we see, then we see the dream for Pilate. Uh, Matthew 27, verse 19, while Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I suffered a great deal in a dream because of him. And when I read this text, I wondered, uh, why did God give his wife a dream and not Pilate? Uh, some have argued uh, that God knows how to get your attention. Uh, 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 he knows who to use uh, to get your attention. He has a way of revealing himself and his purpose to us. Uh, and, and, and his wife has this dream, and evidently, uh, Pilate could be better reached through his wife uh, than through a dream that he would have personally. And here she is, she sends this message to her husband and says to him that I've suffered many things in the dream. And listen, God will use uh, all means necessary to get your attention. And sometimes he uses affliction. And affliction can be very painful. But the purpose of affliction is simply to prevent greater pain. Affliction prompted Pilate's wife uh, to intervene on behalf of Christ. And can you hear her saying that? Do not condemn this man. Uh, and in our own life, uh, uh, God continues, and he does much uh, to keep us from sinning, to get our attention, uh, to get us back on the right path of living. And, and he gives us warnings uh, in due time so we can avoid sinning, so we can avoid uh, the crisis of life. And let me ask you this Sunday morning, are you paying attention? And are you listening to the warning signs? Uh, somebody has said that he would much prefer uh, to be the railing on the top of the hill to keep you from going over, uh, but he'll be the ambulance at the bottom to pick you up. Uh, not only in our text do we see the dream for Pilate, but number three, the debate with Pilate. The crowd and Pilate entered into a debate over who should be released. Now, the law required that, that someone would be released, but Jesus is innocent. Uh, and in the text, he does not speak a word. Uh, both Herod and Pilate uh, have found him innocent of the charges uh, that the people have brought before them. Uh, but yet in Matthew 27, verses 17 to 21, uh, listen to what Pilate says. He says, which of the two do you want me to release to you? Ask the governor. And can't you hear him crying out, Barabbas? Uh, they answered, who to release? Uh, Pilate could have released Jesus. And he still could have released Barabbas. He could have released both of them. After all, Jesus is innocent. Uh, and, and listen, the same, the same crime. Uh, uh, that Barabbas was guilty of, murder, insurrection, attempting to overthrow the Roman government, uh, and murder in the attempted insurrection. Jesus was found guilty of the charges. And look at the crowd. Uh, it has been said that birds of a feather flock together. 
and that people choose after their own kind. Uh, what choices are you making uh, in your life today? Uh, have you made the choice to choose Jesus or the choice to choose Barabbas? Uh, 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 who or what is influencing your decision? Uh, what's keeping you from choosing Jesus? In the text, the text says that it was the priests uh, and the elders uh, who persuaded the multitude to ask for Barabbas. Listen, you got to get a picture of the scene that, 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 that the scene is like a mob room. Uh, that people are screaming and uh, they're yelling and, uh, and, and, that, and, and that they're upset. Uh, people are agitated and, and they're hollering uh, for the release of Barabbas. And isn't it amazing uh, of how it always appears that sin uh, rules uh, and, 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 and reminds me of the capital scene back in January. Uh, this insurrection and mob rule, uh, the people in the text uh, are upset uh, and, 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 and they are howling for Barabbas to be released. And can you imagine Jesus? Uh, Jesus, God's son, uh, who came to die for the sins of mankind, your sins and my sins, and, and all of the good that Jesus has done, all of the people who he has helped, uh, here he is, here he is, early morning, uh, uh, watching the folk who he came to, uh, hollering for a murderer to be released and for him to be crucified. And let me ask you, what voice is hollering in your spirit this Sunday morning? Uh, is it the spirit of Barabbas or is it, is it the spirit of receiving Jesus? And listen, not only do we see uh, the dream for Pilate, uh, the debate with Pilate. Uh, but my final point is we see the decision of Pilate. Matthew 27, verse 22. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. They all answered, crucify him. And let me ask you again, what decision will you make about Jesus? Will your decision be to crucify him or to accept him as Lord and Savior of your life? See, their decision was a deadly decision. Uh, Pilate delivered Jesus to be crucified. Uh, their decision, his decision, was a defiant decision. Jesus was Innocent. And little did they know it was a damning decision. Can't you see in the text? Uh, in the midst of chaos and uh, people hollering and agitated, uh, that Pilate now goes over to a basin. Uh, his wife has told him, have nothing to do with this innocent man. Uh, and then Pilate goes over and washes his hands uh, in a basin. Uh, of that decision that he made. And here is what the people said. The people said, let his blood be on us and our children. But listen, I'm so glad in the final analysis, uh, it wasn't Pilate's decision. It wasn't Herod's decision. It even wasn't the people's decision. It was a God decision. Uh, it was the plan of God. Before the foundation of the world were even laid, it was the plan of God to send his son into the world to save the world from his sins. It was God's plan to save you and to save me from my sins. It was a God decision. For God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And as I close this message this Sunday morning, what is your decision about Jesus? The church leaders, the 
priests and the elders, they made a decision. Pilate made a decision. The crowd made a decision. Herod made a decision. And their decision was, I don't need Jesus. We don't need Jesus. And on this Sunday morning, uh, let me be clear. I need Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, regardless of what they said and the actions they took, I need Jesus. I need him to save me. I need him to wash me, to cleanse me of all of my sins. I need him to walk with me, to talk with me. I need him uh, to answer my prayers. I need him to lead me and guide me. I need him to show me the way I should take. I need him to provide for my family. I need him to put me to bed at night and give me a restful sleep. I need him to wake me up in the morning. I need peace in troubled times. I need him to give me joy uh, when I'm sick. I need him to heal me when I'm down. I need him to pick me up when I'm going in the wrong direction. I need him to turn me around. The question is, do you need him this morning? Uh, I need him. What will you do with Jesus? What will be your decision uh, in this countdown to resurrection weekend? Uh, in this season of rebirth, uh, in this season of newness, what will you do with Jesus? And yes, uh, the economy may be turning around. Yes, vaccines may be available for the COVID virus. Yes, government may be coming around. Uh, but you still need Jesus. In the midst of lostness and death and sorrow and pain, uh, the world needs Jesus more so today than ever before. Uh, what will you do with Jesus? And I believe on this Sunday morning uh, that he's calling somebody uh, from indecision to decision making. Make your decision about Jesus this morning. Make sure your anchor holds and grips to the solid rock. He's calling you from pain to purpose. And listen, all across the nation, uh, people have been memorializing and reflecting upon the pain of this past year. Uh, but when you accept Jesus, uh, he can move you from pain to purpose. Uh, yes, yes, he can. He's able to do that. Why? Because he's God. You reach your simply need to move from indecision to decision making this morning. And listen, for somebody who's in that misery, uh, he can call you from misery to ministry, put you in service, uh, use all of what you've been through the past year to be a comfort for somebody else, to be in ministry, to help pull somebody else up. But you got to make a decision for Jesus. But then, before I close out this Sunday morning, I'd be derelict if I didn't tell you. Uh, when you make your decision about Jesus, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll call you from death unto life. Yeah, and that's the great thing about Jesus. Because they thought on Friday it was over. They thought if they put him to death, uh, that they would end the goodness of Jesus. They thought they would put this ministry to death. It all would be over. But I'm so glad the story didn't end there. Uh, that Jesus came to do away with sin simply by the sacrifice of himself. And can't you see him not saying a word? Can't you see him how they beat him all night long? And all of the things they did to him and whipping him and putting on the scarlet robe and spitting on him and smacking him in his face. And yet Jesus went to Calvary, hallelujah, and freely died. Gave up his life for your life and for my life. But they thought it was over. Took him down from that cross. And the Bible says, put him in a borrowed tomb. And they thought they had him. 
But I'm so glad the story doesn't end there. Because early, <laughs> early Sunday morning, God got him up from the grave. Look at somebody in your house today and tell them, I need Jesus. I need to move from death unto life. If I accept Jesus, the Bible says, he who believes in me, he'll never die. And if you accept him this morning, you move to eternal life. Not something what you get to when this life is over. You have eternal life right now. What will you do with Jesus? He's calling somebody from indecision to decision. Make a choice this morning. And I pray your choice is to choose Jesus. He's calling you from pain to purpose. He has purpose on your life. You were not born just for the fact of being born. You are not here just to be here. God has purpose for your life. And whatever misery you may be in right now, he can use your misery to put you in ministry, cause you to be effective in service for him. And then finally, if you make the choice to accept him, to receive him this Sunday morning, uh, you'll move from death to life. That's the good news of his coming was to move us from being dead in our trespasses and our sins and to give us eternal life. I need Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need Jesus. I need him to walk with me, talk with me, hold my hand, guide me through this life. Hallelujah this morning. Listen, listen. The number's on the screen. The counselors are waiting to receive your call this morning. If you've made that decision today to accept Jesus, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray with you. And, and, and then if you caught in between and you're not sure, we'd love to be able to counsel with you and share with you what the Word of God has to say. Jesus is available. He's available to you right now. You can't go too high, can't be too low. There's nothing that you've ever done that he will not forgive and he will save you right now. The song we sing in church is simply come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. He'll save you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we bless God today for his word. Thank him today for this message. Listen, this is Pastor John T. McCall, senior pastor here at the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church in Pasadena. I pray you're being blessed. Follow us uh, on KVMD, uh, on your local cable station, uh, or tune in to one of our social media platforms uh, on, on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, on our website, um, the Bethel Missionary Baptist Church of Pasadena. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Pray that you're being blessed by these series of messages. And until next time, stay in the blessed place. Thanks for joining the Bethel Pasadena Ministries broadcast. We're prayerful today's message blessed you immensely. If you'd like to support our ministry or have comments or questions, visit us at BethelPasadena.org. We hope to hear from you soon. Until next time, have a blessed day.